good morning students today i am going to discuss with you the characteristic x rays before that uh, we had done uh, x rays what are x rays what is their origin what is the principle of production of x rays continuous x rays now we will continue with characteristic x rays right in characteristic x rays when fast moving electron penetrate through the outer shell of an atom and strikes so hard against an electron in the k shell so that the electron is knocked out from the k shell this create vacancy in the k shell these vacancies are filled from the l shell and the energy difference is given out in the form of x rays okay the frequency nu1 is given by h nu1 is equal to el minus ek this is known as k alpha line of series it is also possible to fill up the vacancy from m shell in k shell so that frequency nu2 is given by h nu2 is equal to em minus ek this is known as ek beta line of series so k line consists of k alpha k beta k gamma from l m n on k shells right again i repeat the same thing in case of uh, uh, this characteristic x uh, characteristic x rays uh, what will happen and uh, uh, very high a velocity electron that strikes on an atom of the target material uh, we know that atom consists of nucleus around which the electrons are revolving in the various orbits and various shells like k l m right so when electron strikes on the uh, target atom it penetrates deep into the atom and it knocks out electron from the innermost shell that is k shell Uh, when it it knocks out the electron a vacancy is created in the k shell here when vacancy is created uh, then the electron from the l shell goes to the k shell where vacancy is created or you there or you can say there is a transition of electron from l shell to k shell this transition leads to the emission of x rays right this transition leads to the emission of x rays or you can say jumping of electron from l shell to k shell give rise to x rays and uh, there are different transitions like from l to k from m to k and uh, there uh, from these we can say there are different uh, lines like k alpha line k beta line k gamma line and these series is called k series here we can say similarly l series are also produced right clear okay this is regarding characteristic x rays now we will continue with x ray diffraction or bragg's law right x ray diffraction or bragg's law x ray diffraction or bragg's law uh, the x ray exhibit the phenomena of diffraction because they are electromagnetic waves right in 1912 german physicist have explained that crystal grating can produce observable diffraction effect with x rays crystal consists of three dimensional array of regularly spaced atoms such arrangement of atoms act as diffraction grating the wavelength of x rays that is 0.1 mm approximately and grating array also called space grating have same order for diffraction to be done uh, or we can say the wavelength x ray wavelength and grating array or space grating have same order for diffraction to be done right x rays was passed x rays were passed through the fine slits in two lead screens right s1 and s2 indicated as s1 and s2 in the further diagram this beam is incident on the thin crystal of zinc sulfide and then transmitted beam was absorbed on a photographic plate and then photographic plate was exposed for a long time after developing it was found that there was a bright dark spot at the center and large number of arranged faint spots called lois pattern lois pattern was obtained with different crystals just you can see in this thing it is a coolidge tube from which x rays are produced and these x rays are passed through fine uh, beam splits s1 and s2 on which small hole is created and this fine beam is strikes on a zinc sulfide crystal right and after passing through zinc sulfide crystal 
there are uh, fine slits, uh, dark and bright spots on a photographic plate. This photographic plate is exposed for a long time, and these this arrangement is called Lois. These spots are called Lois spot, and arrangement is called Lois arrangement. Or Lois, this complete phenomena is called Lois phenomena. Or you can say here zinc sulfide crystal shows that its structure is a simple crystal structure. This is the Lois phenomena of X-ray diffraction using crystal as a diffraction grating, right? So this is the complete diagram for this for uh, production of uh, Lois spots, okay? Or Lois spectra. Now we will continue with the Bragg's law. It is a very important topic in your B.Tech class. Uh, a number of times it had appeared in exams. So according to W. L. Bragg, the spots on a photographic plate during Lois experiment are produced, which we had already done. Uh, and this due to reflection of some of the incident X-rays from various set of parallel planes of atoms. These planes are called Bragg's planes. Uh, again, I repeat what are Bragg's planes actually uh, when X-rays are incident on the uh, zinc sulfide crystal, then in zinc sulfide crystal there are various set of parallel planes and these planes are formed by arranging atoms in a planar structure, right? So these parallel plane of atoms are called Bragg's planes, right? In the crystal structure. Now consider diffraction from a successive plane of atoms. You know about what is diffraction, bending of light around the corners of an obstacle that is called diffraction. Now consider diffraction from successive planes of atoms of crystal. We just consider a narrow monochromatic X-ray beam uh, falling on the crystal. We just consider a narrow monochromatic X-ray beam. This is falling on the cleavage planes. These are the different planar structures in a crystal. Here atoms are regularly arranged. You can see in the diagram here atoms are regularly arranged, right? Uh, these are these are cleavage planes of the crystal at an angle. Uh, this incident X-ray strikes on the crystal or uh, narrow monochromatic X-ray beam. This is falling on the cleavage planes. This X-ray beam is falling on the cleavage plane. It is uh, after striking it is reflected back. Again, another uh, parallel beam of X-ray strikes on another plane. Again, it is reflected back. And these are incident on a crystal at an angle theta, right? Which is called Bragg's angle, right? So this is angle theta. Now, according to Bragg's law, Bragg's equation is given by this thing. 2D sine theta is equal to N lambda. Here, 2 is constant. D is the interplanar spacing, interplanar spacing. And theta is the Bragg's angle. This theta is the Bragg's angle. N is the uh, number, n where n is an integer, and lambda is the wavelength of incident particle, incident wave beam. Okay. Again, consider a set of parallel lattice planes of crystals separated by distance d apart. If a narrow beam of X-rays with wavelength lambda is incident upon these planes at a glancing angle theta which is also known as Bragg's angle, then the beam will re is reflected in all directions by the atoms of various atomic planes. The ray AB is reflected along BE. As you can see in this, AB is reflected along BE and CD is reflected along DF. It is mentioned here, ray AB is reflected along BE and similarly ray CD is reflected along DF. From B draw BG perpendicular to CD and BH perpendicular to DF. BG perpendicular to CD, BG perpendicular to CD and BH perpendicular to DF. Right? Here from B here and from here. This is 90 degree, this is 90 degree. Right? So these and two perpendiculars we had drawn. After that, now path difference delta S is equal to GD plus DH. GD plus DH. GD plus DH. That is delta S. That is path difference. Right? So path difference delta S is equal to GD plus DH. Consider right angle triangle BGD. Consider right angle triangle BGD. BGD is this. BGD. BGD. D. This is right angle triangle. You can see 
then another uh, in this case sin theta is gd upon bd sin theta is gd upon bd gd upon bd perpendicular over hypotenuse right gd upon bd so gd is bd sin theta take bd to this side bd sin theta bd is small d d sin theta right gd is d sin theta now similarly consider right angle triangle bhd consider right angle triangle bhd here bhd right in this case in in take of b at in case of bhd sin theta is dh upon bd sin theta is dh upon bd sin theta is dh upon perpendicular over hypotenuse d dh upon bd right dh upon bd or you can say uh, dh upon bd dh is bd take bd to this side bd sin theta or you can say d sin theta dh is d sin theta now delta s delta s is equal to d sin theta plus d sin theta delta s is equal to d sin theta plus d sin theta means gd plus dh delta s is equal to d sin theta plus d sin theta gd plus dh so in this case delta s is equal to 2d sin theta right but delta s path difference is equal to integral multiple of wavelength so delta s is equal to n lambda right delta s is equal to n lambda that is equal to 2d sin theta so n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta where n is equal to 1 2 3 depending upon the plane so this is bragg's law n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta this is bragg's law here path difference path difference is in multiple of n lambda delta s is multiple of n lambda then due to constructive interference the two rays will superimpose with each other and produce intense spot right in different directions in which intense reflection will produce and can be obtained by giving different values of theta right so this is regarding bragg's law now we will continue with bragg's x-ray spectrometer so bragg's x-ray spectrometer again we consider coolidge tube where x-rays are produced these x-rays are passed through different fine slits s1 and s2 then this types on the crystal which is placed on a turntable and turntable is connected to a battery and a meter spectrometer right so we will continue with this thing uh, it is devised by wh this will continue in the next lecture uh, bragg's x-ray spectrometer right so thank you very much